So what I made is called the pizza rito. I take a pizza, I roll it up like a burrito, hence the name pizza rito. That name in itself offended thousands of people. All right. Hey guys, welcome back to the Smart Pizza Marketing Podcast. Excited for my guest, Michael Russo from Russo's. He's going to join us and talk about his experience in the pizza biz, what he's doing to generate sales from social media. That's kind of how we found Michael. He's doing a tremendous job on there getting exposure for his business. So we're going to introduce Michael. Michael, thank you so much for joining me on the podcast. Thanks for joining us. Absolutely. What's up, Bruce? Thank you for having me. Um, I always love hearing the stories of how people got into the pizza business and what you're doing now that's different, that's you know generating exposure and sales for your business. So before we get into all of that, because that's a good story we talked about a little bit before we got on here, but give us a little background about your background and how you got into the restaurant space. I got you. All right. So um, I always wanted to follow in my father's footsteps when I was a kid. My father is a doctor and uh, all the way through school, I went to school to become a doctor. But then a little history of my father is him and his father were in the pizza business way before he was a doctor. And then he got out. So then halfway through school, I said, you know what, dad, I love you, but I don't want to do this anymore. I want to go back to where you left off. And he said, no, but I said, I guarantee you, I will change the dynamics of the pizzeria business and the pizza business. I will turn it on its head. Just give me a little time. I promise you. And here I am today doing things a little bit differently, going against the grain. Now your dad, what did your dad have a pizzeria to like to kind of help him get through school? No, his father just had them all over the place and he just, my father and him ran them. Oh. And then when my fa father graduated, my, uh, I guess my grandfather just sold them all. Oh, so your dad went to school to specifically be a doctor. Yes. That's cool. And just yeah. you, what you realize going through school that, you know what, I didn't really want to be a doctor. Yeah, no, it just, it just that I thought my whole life, what I wanted to do was um, I, I didn't have my own thought process of what exactly it was I wanted to do, but both my parents are entrepreneurs. I know that's exactly what I wanted to do, but specifically being a doctor, I just, it just wasn't lighting my flame, I guess. But at the end of the day, if you really think about it, people always got to eat. People are always hungry. True. Now, how did, when did you open your first restaurant? I opened in 2011. Oh, wow. So you and, did it for a little bit. Yeah, I opened it in 2011. History with that is my grandfather's pizzerias were called House of Pizza. I put Russo's House of Pizza in front of it for the people that remember my grandfather's. It worked for a few years. And then after a while, everybody kind of that remembered my grandfather slowly drifted away and I developed my own following. Hence why four or five months ago, I rebranded it to just, I dropped the House of Pizza and it's just Russo's because there's so much more than just pizza. Now explain what your business is and like your business model. Uh, so basically I tell everybody when you walk into my, my front door, you're not walking into my business. You're walking into my house. I talk to you exactly like I would be talking to you on the phone right now. I don't know you from boo, but I'll talk to you. Like I've, I went to school with you. That's my business model is to treat everybody like family. Uh, you get back what you give me or vice versa. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, um, I do things a little untraditional. Um, I recently just went viral, like very viral. And what I went viral for is very untraditional and very, I got more, more of the uh, not so friendly comments about it than I did the, Oh my God, this is the coolest thing ever, but it's actually pretty funny. Now, so. <laughs> what is it? Do you have a, is it yours like a sit down restaurant with wait staff or is it more takeout delivery? It's uh, I don't have a wait staff. It's uh, you want something, you order it at my counter and then you come and get it at my counter and then you sit down at a table. Okay. I have one, two, three, four, five. I have seven tables, but they're bigger tables and everything's custom made in my store. Like my tables are custom made by me and my father. My high tops are custom made. It's just, it's, it's a pretty cool setup. It's like an old Brooklyn pizzeria slash warehouse look. Got it. And where are you located for the people listening at home? I'm in uh, Pearl River, New York, which is in Rockland County. Okay. Now let's get back to that viral story. Cause I'm interested to hear about that. So it's like, what was it? What happened? All right. So I was, uh, okay. You want to hear about what I created? Yeah. All right. So what I made is called the pizza Rito. I take a pizza, 
I roll it up like a burrito, hence the name Pizzerito. That name in itself offended thousands of people. So what happened was, <laughs> <laughs> what happened was I saw on social media one day, this place, they just wrapped up in a regular tortilla wrap, penne and chicken. I looked at it, I'm like, wow, that looks really good, but I guarantee you I could do a thousand times better than that just because my wheels are always turning, always turning, always turning. So I burnt a pie in the oven weeks later and on my board for my menu was a meatball parm, a chicken parm, a baked ziti. These are all the tickets that were on the board. So I said, wait a second, guys, take over. Let me do this. So I started mixing all different things. So I put chicken parm, uh, meatball parm, baked ziti, mozzarella sticks, and uh, pepperoni. I put it in the oven. I do a couple secret steps. I rolled it up. And it's about six to seven pounds in the shape of a burrito. And nobody has finished it up until two competitive eaters have come in. So on social media, I tagged the right people. The right people came in and then the right other people saw it. So then New York Insider came, uh, BuzzFeed came. I'm waiting for an episode on the Travel Channel to come out in January or February. Um, the local news around here, News 12, Hudson Valley, uh, just did a piece on me. So I was all over the news with that. Uh, just just the right right timing, I guess, and just the right moves that I did on social media. And now I think you did something different too, where it's like you, you kind of, you, you did a different, unique twist on something, right? You didn't like copy somebody else and then tag those people because <laughs> they've already seen that before. Absolutely not. So I've had people that say, oh, I've rolled up a pizza before. How come I'm not, you know, going viral? I tell everybody, and this is my punchline. I didn't reinvent the wheel. I just rolled it up. <laughs> Who'd you tag on there? Do you remember who you tagged? Like what accounts or is it certain? Who do you look for? Do you look for like magazines? Or do you look for influencers? The first, the first major account is uh, Jess from uh, Cheat Days. You ever hear of them? Her? No. Cheat Days, she's got like 400,000 followers and uh, she's all over um, Insider, Insider Food, uh, the Food Network, Travel Channel. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, who else? BuzzFeed, you know, BuzzFeed. Yeah. They came in, they did a video. Um, I just try to tag all the, the, the major social media influences that are constantly active with videos that don't mind traveling that they want to come in for content. So it's content for their page. Not like, Oh, Hey, I'm going to send you a message, come into my restaurant and I'm going to pay you a couple hundred bucks so you could advertise for me. That's not interesting to me because then that's not genuine. Right. The everything you see on my page and all the reactions are real reactions. Not that I paid you to do that. I'm not a big fan of that. Now I see I, if, you, if you go to your Instagram account, you have a lot. Now there's something else I see on there. It's uh, you made a house for the elf on the shelf. Yeah. <laughs> That's uh, pretty funny. This guy Rev came in. Uh, I got a message from him. I got a message from uh, Boozy Burbs and they messaged me saying, Hey, we know you're crazy and creative and make random things and you have spur of the moment ideas. Uh, would you mind doing this for us? I'm like, it's not even a question. Just show up at my shop and I don't know how I'm going to do it, but I'll figure it out along the way. As long as you guys have patience with me. Cause I have no patience. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Rev. Oh yeah. Him. So he messaged me and he, uh, he's like, would, would you be willing to do this with one of his friends? And I'm just like, absolutely. Come on in. One of the coolest guys. So, so I uh, did it for him, no questions asked, and that's how we made it. How does that? How has that one gone? Has it been taken off? No, I actually that one was just not for sale. That is just not. That wasn't. That was a one-time thing, because the amount of time that that took for us to do that and figure it out, I'm just like, all right, guys, and enjoy the pictures. <laughs> <laughs> just for social media purpose only. How did you do that? Did you like make pizzas and like after they're cooked, kind of form them into the shape of a house? Burn them. Really? I made a bunch of, I made a bunch of pizzas. I burnt them, made them really well done. This way they like stand at attention. Yep. And like flop. So I had to burn them, let them sit for a little bit. And then like inside the bread house, there was a couple like uh, containers that I had holding it up. Can I share that picture? Huh? Can I share that picture? Yeah. If you have it, go ahead. Share All right. Yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to on your Instagram account. I'm going to share that. So if you go to the show notes for this episode, you can see it there, but we'll probably, this episode of the show will probably come out weeks after we record it. So you probably have already seen it on our social, on the Facebook and our Instagram feed. So I saw that and I was like, wow, that's a brilliant idea. <laughs> that's all Rev. That was Rev and um, 
boozy. They, uh, did, like I said, they just messaged me. There's like, you're nuts. You want to do it? Okay. Now, where does all this creative come from? Like your creativity, where does it come from for the fact that, you know, I think a lot of people get stuck doing the same thing over and over and over again. And they don't, they can't think of new things. They see something on Instagram or on Facebook and they try to emulate it, but they can't come up with their own. Like, where did your creativity come from? I see something and I say, how could I make that better? Not that I'm a problem solver and I'm a world problem solver, but it's, I like to have fun every day with certain things and think of different things because the moment, what, what fuels that, the creativity is autopilot. Autopilot freaks me out. Autopilot means that, okay, this is what I do all day, every day. Boop. It's the end of the week. Okay. Here we go again, starting it again on Monday, do the same thing over and over and over repetitive that can get you far. And granted it, it you, come accustomed to repetitive and you could be a master at your craft. But when you try to, like I said, do reinvent something, not reinvent it, but make it a little bit better than it already is. Uh, amazing things could happen. I call that ground like show because we say, because I always tell people because we get emails all the time about people saying, Hey, um, you know, what do I show on social media? I'm like, to you, it's groundhog day. Like every Monday's Monday, every Tuesday is Tuesday, but to the people in the outside world, Uh, They don't know what's happening in your restaurant and it's a great way for you to show them and like give give them an inside look at what's happening in your, in your restaurant and in your business from like a behind the scenes type of feel. So you don't feel like it's groundhog every day. You're just going through the motion. Right. Like a a lot of people say to me, because if you ever watch my stories, I do a lot of personal things on the stories. I do that to show people I'm still human. I'm a family man. I'm a, I'm a fun guy, like outside of my store, in my store. You know, it's not just strictly business inside my store because I feel that people don't get uh, the personal feel, the personal touch when they're just staring at pictures of just pizza, pasta, heroes. That's it. Day in, day out. They get bored. Right. A study has shown, if this is true, that we now have an attention span less than a goldfish. <laughs> I mean, I know. I do too. So it's like you keep right. You just keep it interesting, keep it going. And just, uh, nobody will get bored. You'll just keep your followers going up and up and up and up and just come along for the ride with me. That's what I'm about. You know, it's like, it's not just for me. I tell everybody, you don't, my employees, you don't work for me. You work with me. We all work together and everybody does everything. There's not like one person sweeping, one person making pizza and that's it. That's your job. No, everybody does everything. Now, do your employees help you come up with these ideas? Do you guys like brainstorm together or are they just kind of there maintaining the business while you're the creative? They they help me um, make it a little bit better. Like they'll, I'm like, all right, I got an idea. This is how I'm going to do it. All right, I got it. And then through trial and error, they're just like, ah, why don't you do this? Well, well, try try it with this and then go back to your plan. And then it's like a hybrid of, of everybody. Right. How long have you been on Instagram for? Uh... I'm in my location now for four years. So I really started with social media about three, three, four years now. And what made you decide to get into like social media? You just saw the people, that's where the attention was. And you're like, I need to produce content for these platforms. True story. The guy that works for me, Phil, uh, Phil, when you see this, yep. (laughs) Um, We'll tag Phil. uh, Yeah, we'll tag Phil. (laughs) He uh, just said, yo, you need Instagram. I'm like, I don't want to get on social media crap. I don't need people seeing anything. He goes, just shut up. He made me one. And then here we are. Really? Yep. He made it for me. I'm like, all right, that looks cool. He set me up and then I took it from there. Now, how, how did you learn over the years? Cause you get pretty good at it. I see your photos on there and your stories. Like you've been, obviously you can tell that you uh, know how to produce the content on there. Is it just trial and error over time? You've gotten better at it? Yeah. It's all trial and error. It's, I, I watch other people. I observe. I, I always sit back and observe. I observe the good. I observe the bad. I learn mostly from bad things that I see. Like, um, like people say, oh, you got to learn from the most successful people and this and that. I don't learn from them because they're already there. It sounds easy for what they did. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I look from the people. It's like, oh, don't do that. All right. So I'll do the opposite of what you just did. That's how I learn. That's me. It's like, I need to see the mistake happen first, or I need to make the mistake first and then, and then learn from it. Like I've taken plenty of crappy pictures. I'm like, Oh wow, this didn't get any traction at all. And then 
somebody comes in and it's like, oh, hey, I saw this on Instagram. I'm like, wow, I thought it was a crappy ass picture, but all right, it was good. Yeah. So you never know, right? Yeah, that's, nope. It's, sometimes it's a shot in the dark. Yeah. Sometimes it's just the consistency over time that compiles and it makes it, uh, you know, work for you. It's not like you're going to be like, oh, I'm going to post one great picture to Instagram today and I'm going to get 4 million likes. It doesn't necessarily work like that. Nope. I, there was a couple of times that I was like, all right, I got this video. Boom. You help me. You help me. <laughs> We're going to make this five o'clock. Ready? Go. Boom. A couple people saw it. A couple people liked it. I'm like, what the, how did that happen? <laughs> It's just, it's a shot in the dark. Instagram's algorithms, they just, they like things, they don't like things. It's right. just, you can't control it. It's now, not like, you, hey, Instagram, I'm going to give you $100. Can you make my post go a thousand likes besides boosting a post? And it's like, now when I boost things, like I do it on Facebook once in a while. Like if I do like my holiday uh, menu, right. I'll boost that on Facebook to be like, all right, let me pump out some catering. But uh, I really, I'm not a big fan of that because it's like, here, now I'm begging you for my business. I'm not begging anybody for anything. You come, you come. You don't, you don't. But I promise you, you'll love it when you do come. Now, are you, are you posting the same things you do on Instagram onto Facebook? Uh, my father, because I can't be everywhere at the same time, my father uh, runs my Facebook and he basically just, whatever I post on Instagram, he puts onto Facebook. Okay. Do you get the so same results on Facebook? Instagram, Huh? Do you get the same results that you get on Instagram on Facebook? Surprisingly, a lot of the mega uh, accounts and uh, people that have come in to take videos and stuff have reached out on Facebook because they couldn't get me on Instagram. So I do kind of get the same. Yeah, I, I get the same reactions. I can see that though, because I feel like on Facebook, it's a lot easier for someone to share something than it is on Instagram. Like you can comment, yeah. you can like, you can DM you on Instagram, but to, the sharing part aspect of Facebook is a lot more consumer friendly than it is on Instagram. Instagram is more like, okay, I like it. Uh, maybe it'll go onto the Instagram uh, feed where everybody can see it and it gets noticed. But for the most part, Facebook is the spot where you can like get, if it's a really good, funny post, like you can get that shared by a, a few hundred people. And then from there, all their friends mm -hmm. and family see it. And then it stays on your page, on your feed. Right. Then on, on Instagram, no, it's like if I go share with you something that I saw on on one of these big Instagram accounts, it's like, okay, only you will see that. Right. Nobody else will see what I just shared with you. Right. Where on Facebook, it stays on your page. And yeah, so I think that that's smart to do that. I think people should do that. I, I, we see a lot of people sharing stuff on Facebook quite a bit, yeah. to be honest with you. Yeah, absolutely. A lot of people say uh, both platforms have their place. Um, a lot of people say Facebook is dying, but it's like Facebook is what really helped me go viral. Uh, Instagram obviously very helped me go viral, but Facebook was a major player and people do still, still look at Facebook and use it to do their activities. Like, oh, this is good. This popped up on my feed or these parents saw this. So they're on a group and they said, oh, here, go here. So it does have a big place. Facebook still has a big place in, in the social media game. It's like all those people who say they're going to move after the president gets elected and then they never move. Right, shut up. <laughs> the, the same, the, no those same people saying they're going to delete Facebook after all these things, but you know what? No one's deleting Facebook. Mm -hmm. They're still all there. And I love the they're fact that there. people don't, I love the fact that people say they're, they're going to not, uh, uh, you know, spend money on Facebook advertising or post to Facebook because then it's just more room for us who do it. Yeah. Thank you. Like the posting, the, the, the boosting, I do that on Facebook. Yeah. I do that a lot on Facebook. Like I said, like for certain, certain things that I want done that I want to show, like I said, catering, like, all right, Christmas Eve, I'm closed half a day, but it's only for catering. So I'll go boost a menu where if I think catering is going to be a little light, I'll go boost it towards the end of the week. And then I'll get a flood of people come Saturday, Sunday, say, Hey, we need a tray of this or a tray of this come Monday. Can you do it for me? Yeah, sure. That's why I boosted it. Right. Now, do you do any offline marketing or is all your marketing done online? Um, thanks to social media, I haven't paid for any type of marketing in years. That's awesome. But my thing, none, I have not spent one dime on marketing at all. Besides, like I said, the boosting on Facebook, which is like five, 10 bucks. Right. Once in a, once in a blue moon, but that's not, uh, print ads. I feel so bad when I get these, these coupon guys and these print ad guys that walk in 
And they're like, oh, I seen you on the news. You know, would you like to take an ad out? And I say, I got on that news because of free social media. No print ad because let's be honest, I'm talking to you on my phone. <laughs> right. this, is, this is what people look at all day long. Yep. You very rarely see anybody pick up a coupon book, pick up a, a flyer. There was this, there's this magazine by us called the, the Penny Saver. I don't know if they have it by you. Some, we have some. Used to, be this, used to be this big. Now it's a cover, two pages, and a back cover. And that's it. Nobody, I don't even know if they're around anymore. Nobody, barely anybody's taking out print ads. Yeah, you know, you're the right. Only people, the only people you see doing that is like doctors or like uh, senior businesses or stuff like that. You know, it's it's the younger generation, my generation, and below me it's just this is like right here this is this is what you get right here this thing and i like i think there's a spot for direct mail if you're going to use that maybe if you're new to the area and you want to be like you know what i just opened i want everybody to see me real quick in exactly the right because if you're big on social media but you just move if i just went to pick up and go to california and it's like russo's in california cool who the hell are you nobody knows it's gonna take yeah, you, you time. can follow my social media yeah. You got to follow my social media, but that's not there right away. Yeah. You have the direct mailer. Cool. Right. Now, how does this, you know, that'll tell you that I'm here. Let me ask you a question. So all of this exposure that you get in all of these videos, how does that, does that dramatically increase your business? Yeah. Because I get people walking in with their phones and they're saying, Hey, I want this or, Hey, I saw you on world star reposted me. Uh, I'm sure you heard of world star. Yeah. They reposted one of my videos and um, Italian comedy reposted one of my videos and I get all these people from all over all walks of life. That's, that's the joy of, of all of it um, that you get just people from all over traveling far and wide. And like, I'm really pumped and excited to see what happens when that travel channel airs. Like when that episode comes out, it's supposed to come out a month ago, but they had an issue with some other uh, place that they were filming with. So it took a little, little stall. But uh, that's coming out. I can't wait to see the people that travel for that because there's foodies and people that, that uh, side note, foodie, that's a completely new business era, a, a new, <laughs> new field. What are you? I'm a foodie. Yeah. I did not know that was a profession. Those are professions now. It is. You're <laughs> uh, you have people that see these shows and they just travel all over just to, all right, I saw it on uh, the travel channel. So I'm going to go take a road trip. I had somebody message me last night saying, Hey, I'm planning a trip up in uh spring to come to you. You know, I'm a big car guy. And I'm like, Oh, well we're doing a rally around springtime. They're like, yeah, we're going to stop at your store. And then we're going to go on your route, one of your rallies. So it's a cool thing. People travel far and wide when you're on uh, social media and it's just anybody, the beauty of it is anybody could see you anywhere from any point in the world. Yeah. Unless you, you have no sir. <laughs> yeah, the, I was just gonna say, you want to see a group of frustrated people just slow the internet down in a room where they're all hanging out. That's it. Um, That's I was gonna it. say, we've had people on the show who have been on diners, drivers and dives, they then they call it like the guy Fieri effect, where as soon as you're on that show, business just kind of explodes, because there are people who are just watching TV looking for new places and new experiences. And when yeah. they nowadays that's social media though like you could totally do the same thing that guy does for those businesses on your own it may take you a little bit longer in the you have to be a little creative but you can still do it on your own business when that airs or does it can does it remain over the course of time or does it depend on if you do a good job or not it 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 uh when it when it goes out like um when the travel channel came in and they were in the middle of filming you know i did a little invite on instagram where uh, I told like the town, I said, whoever wants to be on TV, I need to fill these seats at a certain time. I need to fill the seats at a certain time. So um, come on in. Yep. Insider didn't tell me they were supposed to release the video a week later than they did. They released it at the same time that the travel channel was inside my store filming. So it was exactly like 9-11 when they reached over to Bush and said, our country is under attack. Somebody leaned over to me while I was getting interviewed by the travel channel. My father or somebody leaned over to me and said, the insider just released a video. And I just went blank. And I went, <laughs> Oh God, I swear to God, within five minutes, the phone did not stop. Really? Was that quick? The whole weekend, the phone did not stop. Michael, let me try. 
That's crazy. Yeah, man. So people really do. So you, so people really do pay attention to those. Was it on Instagram that they did it or did they do it on Facebook? Uh, they did it on Facebook and Instagram. Okay. So people are obviously watching those and they're looking for new experiences. And did you, well, what was the video that they released? Was it the one about the pizzeria? Thank you so much. Um, it was, um, they, they released a video that they came in and recorded themselves. Okay. What was it about? Yeah. It was about the pizzerito. Okay. Not the All of the different flavors that I have, they came in, they ripped it up. They did their, their cheesy pictures, like literally the cheese pulling pictures and a dramatic, dramatic video that they made and, and just showed them eating it. And that's what grabbed everybody's attention. Nice. So what does the future hold for you? Like, what are you looking to do in the future? What ideas do you have coming out? What is the, uh, what does Russo's look like five years from now? Um, I'm, I'm looking to stay the same, you know, hometown pizzeria, but also make it something that I can duplicate, you know, because right now my business is a lot of people come to see me and my family. Yeah. But this is a very scalable business. The way I, the way my menu set up, the way things are made, everything has an exact measurement. You know, so it's very scalable where if I wanted to open one in South Jersey, I could, I could do it the way I remodeled the store. Everything is, is now scalable, is now um, duplicable. Make it right, yeah. So that's, now I could, I could multiply it anywhere I want, but now, in time, not. So you want to be the face of the brand and come up with the, be the person on Instagram or the person that people know, but then have multiple restaurants around wherever they are. Right. Uh, be the brand, be the face that people know. That's how this place got started. Uh, that's how my place got its, its uh, reputation. People always associate it with me. But uh, I'm slowly transitioning my face away. So people still know me. They still come for me and my family. But you're really here for the food. Because when it's really, 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 really busy, I try to give everybody my full undivided attention. But their face is in the food. You know what I mean? Yeah. Now you still work so at the restaurant a lot? Yeah. Like we're driving back now so I can get changed and go to my shop. <laughs> okay. So you're still I'm in the trenches. I'm in six days a week. Yeah. Yeah. So yep. you're doing, you're doing the marketing with the ideas and the creativity and being in the shop. So anybody who's out there who says they can't do that, it's, they're just lying to themselves. There's 24 hours in the day. I'm sure you've heard it. Everybody has the same 24 hours a day and two hands and two feet. Cool, man. I love this. I can... I'm not big for excuses. It's Granted, there's a time and a place for an excuse and legitimate reason, but it's I literally do everything. Granted, my father helps run my books and stuff, but um, I, I there's no reason why you can't. You know, There's a point where you feel like you're killing yourself, but... I feel the short amount of time, let's say five, a little bit under 10 years, you're setting up a future, a foundation for years and years and years to come. You know, I believe in starting from scratch. I believe in, um, you buy a failure. Both of my locations were failures that I bought. And then I turned them around to what they are because when you buy a success, if people know the old owner's face, or it's a successful restaurant and you paid primo dollar for it. There's a time and a place for that. And granted, you'll make a lot of money and you'll make your money back. But there's only so long that that success could stay there. And there's only one way to go. It was this way. Unless you maintain it properly, which a lot of people figure, oh, well, I got a lot of money. I can maintain it. That's not true. Where the opposite, where you buy a failure like I did, there's only one way to go. You can't go any worse than it is now so with a little time and effort and a little love and finesse you bring it up what did you learn about the pizza business did you did your dad help you like teach you about yeah, my, my father showed me everything i know and he'll hear this obviously but uh he'll say it i taught him everything he knows but he could run circles around me now <laughs> would he really say that absolutely he says it to everybody i taught my son the business but that's about it what, did, what do you, what do you look back about your dad that, that he taught you and like, remember the most? Um, 
you work for yourself, nobody else, and you paint your own picture. And that's what I'm doing. I follow no rules. I'm not a big fan of rules. I hate rules. I listen to no one. I work for myself. And I share my experiences with everybody else. And uh, just my love and joy for life with everybody else. And that's up to nobody else's terms. And that's something my father taught me. That's awesome. Michael, where can people go, go check you out? Whether that be on Instagram or on Facebook or online, where can they go to see what you're up to? Instagram. Instagram, you'll find on my, on my stories, you'll see a lot of personal stories, me being a clown, acting like a fool, just to show people I'm human. And uh, the page is filled with my wonderful food or people who are coming in to record the uh, pizzeria or just take videos of new things that I keep coming out with all the time. Well, next so time Instagram, you come on facebook but instagram i'm very active on that. yeah instagram was what russo's house of pizza on instagram russo's house of pizza yep and then uh is that on facebook as well same thing same exact on facebook okay cool well we'll link that up in the show notes for this episode tag me next time you do something crazy on instagram i want to see it got you and if you're uh listening to this as you're working or in the car and we will take all the show notes for you you can know it over smartpizzamarketing.com uh type in russo's in the search bar this will bring you to this episode and we'll link up Michael's Instagram, his Facebook, and we'll put all those videos to all the crazy creations that he came up with. Uh, you probably saw the Elf on the Shelf house made out of pizza. We already shared probably a couple weeks back. So that's Michael. We called that, we called that the guinea bread house. No <laughs> offense. That's fine. That's fine. No, <laughs> no offense taken. Um, uh, Michael, thank you so much for joining me on the podcast. It was awesome talking to you. Absolutely, man. It was a pleasure meeting you. Thank you so much for watching the SPM show. For more episodes, make sure that you subscribe, follow us on Facebook or on Instagram, and head over to smartpizzamarketing.com for all of our past podcast episodes and future episodes of the SPM show.